In this lesson, I am going to discuss linear transformations. In particular, I will be giving 10 examples and non-examples of linear transformations so that you will really understand the definition. What are linear transformations? Suppose that we have a function from a vector space V to a vector space W. We say that it is a linear transformation if it satisfies these two properties. The first property is saying that we can sort of distribute our linear transformation. To visualize the first property, suppose that this is my vector space V and this is my vector space W. If I get two arbitrary elements in V, let's call them U and V, and I add them up, I then apply my linear transformation T. So therefore, this is now T of U plus v. This t of u plus v here should be the same as getting the images of u and v first. So this is t of u. This is getting t of v and adding this two. When you add this two, you will get this. So again, what is happening here? If you have two arbitrary elements, you add them up first. So you got u plus v, and then you apply the transformation t. This element should be the same if you apply first the linear transformation t to your two vectors u and v, and then you add them up. For the second property, to visualize it, again, this is my v and w. I have my u here. Multiply a scalar c. So I will get C times U. Once I have my C times U, I will now apply T. And this is my T of C U. This should be the same if I apply first T to my vector U. So I get T of U. And then now I multiply this by C. So this should be the same as C times T of U. We say that a linear transformation is operation preserving because the same result occur whether the operations of addition and scalar multiplication are performed before or after the linear transformation is applied. Please take note also that the addition in the first property here, this addition here, happens in the vector space v so therefore this addition is addition in v whereas here your t of u plus t of v it happens in your vector space w so therefore the addition here is your addition in w here are two simple linear transformations suppose that v and w are vector spaces our first linear transformation would be the zero transformation it sends all vectors v in the zero vector. Take note that this zero vector here is the zero vector in what vector space? It's the zero vector in W because T of V is inside the vector space W. Also, we have the identity transformation. It sends each vector V to itself. You can verify that these two are really linear transformations. It satisfies the two properties. Here is an example of a linear transformation. We have a function from R2 to R2. So what it does is that it sends the vector xy to x negative y. So therefore, this transformation is actually a reflection along the x-axis. Let us verify that this is really a linear transformation. For our first property, we want to verify that T of U plus V is the same as T of U plus T of V, where U and V are elements in V. Now remember that our V here is R2. So therefore, we take two arbitrary elements in R2. I now write this as... I will get two arbitrary elements, so my first element is x1, y1. My second element is x2, y2. 
I will now check if this is the same as So this becomes this. Let us start with the left hand side. First, we add x1, y1 plus x2, y2. So that's x1 plus x2, y1 plus y2. And then we apply the function t. What does the function t does? It gets the first coordinate and gets the negative of the second coordinate. So this is now x1 plus x2 and the negative of the second coordinate, negative y1 plus y2. How about the right-hand side? T of x1, y1 is... Copy the first coordinate, get the negative of the second coordinate. Similarly, t of x2, y2, copy the first coordinate and then get the negative of the second coordinate. And when we add this up, we get x1 plus x2, negative y1 minus y2. And of course, these two are the same. So therefore, we have verified property 1. Next, let us verify the second property. T of C times U is that equal to C times T of U, where U is an arbitrary element in R2. So I will replace my U with an arbitrary element in R2. Let's say XY. This is equal to let us simplify first this expression. This is Cx, Cy. When we apply the function t, we copy the first coordinate, get the negative of the second coordinate. We can factor out the c. This is c times x negative y. And this is exactly your x negative y is your t of x y. So we have verified the second property. Hence, this is really a linear transformation. Here's another example. Again, it's a function from R2 to R2. What does this function do? What it does is that it gets the Difference of the first coordinate minus the second coordinate. And then for the second coordinate, it adds the two coordinates. Let us verify the first property. So first, we get two arbitrary elements in R2 again, just like what we did earlier. Our two arbitrary elements are x1, y1, and x2, y2. And we will check if this is the same as... Applying first t to your first element and adding them with t of x2, y2. Let us start with the left-hand side. The left-hand side is t of x1 plus x2, y1 plus y2. When we apply t on x1 plus x2, y1 plus y2, what do we need to do first? subtract the two coordinates so we have x1 plus x2 minus y1 plus y2 next we add the two coordinates x1 plus x2 y1 plus y2 let us now simplify our right hand side the right hand side is This one. T of x1, y1 is subtract x1 minus y1 and add x1 with y1. Plus, 
p of x2, y2 is, again, subtract the two coordinates and then add. When you add these two vectors, we get x1 minus y1, x2 minus y2, x1 plus y1 plus x2 plus y2. But then if you look at this and this, they are equal. Left hand side is the same as your right hand side. So therefore, this is true. Next, let us verify the second property. The second property is saying that if we get the scalar multiple of a vector in R2, it's the same as scalar multiple of its image. This is what we want to verify. The left-hand side is equal to P of C, X, C, Y. By definition, again, we subtract the two coordinates and then add them. This is the same as C times X minus Y, C times X plus Y. I factored out C. And this is your C times the vector X minus Y, X plus Y, which is exactly your C times T of X, Y. So therefore, this is also true. Hence, this is a linear transformation. Here's another example. Let us verify that this is a linear transformation. So what it does is that the image of an element in R2 can be obtained by simply multiplying the matrix A on the left. So in this case, A times XY is equal to X times X minus Y. Let us verify our first property. For the left-hand side, this is T of x1 plus x2, y1 plus y2. When we apply T on this vector, what does it do? It copies the first coordinate and then it subtracts first minus second coordinate. So in this case, this is x1 plus x2 and then x1 plus x2 minus y1 plus y2. If we look at our right-hand side, T of x1, y1 by definition is x1 and then x1 minus y1. T of x2 is, copy the x coordinate, and then first minus second coordinate. So that's x2 minus y2. And this is equal to x1 plus x2 x1 minus y1 plus x2 minus y2. Again, notice that this is the same as this one. Therefore, the left-hand side is equal to your right-hand side. So this first property is verified. Next, we want to verify the second property. Starting with the left-hand side, apply for C times XY, that is CX, CY. When we apply T to this vector, copy the first coordinate and then subtract first coordinate minus second coordinate. 
I can write this as cx and then common factor of c. So we have c x minus y and this is c times the vector x x minus y. The vector x x minus y is t of x y. So therefore this is also true. Hence we really have a linear transformation. Now, in general, if we are given a fixed m by n matrix, if we define the linear transformation T, where it sends a vector in Rn into Rm by multiplying the matrix A on the left, this is a linear transformation. Let us verify the first property. T of V plus W is that the same as T of V plus T of W, where V and W are in v what is our v in this case rn so starting with the left hand side t of v plus w by definition what does the function t does it gets the input and multiply a on its left so this is a times v plus w this is just matrix multiplication a times v plus w is equal to a v plus a w but a V is your T of V and A times W is your T of W. Next, let us verify that T of C V is equal to C times T of V. Again, here V is in Rn. Starting with the left-hand side again, what the function T does is it multiplies a on the left of the input but we know that if we have a scalar we can simply pull it out so this becomes c times a v and this is now your c times t of v hence we have just verified that multiplication on the left by a fixed matrix is a linear transformation here is another example. Suppose that I have a fixed vector 1, 2 in R2. So I have this function from R2 to R. It is defined by this. It maps a vector in R2 to the dot product of 1, 2 and that vector. So this is really in R. Let us verify the first property. For the left hand side, this is equal to T of x1 plus x2, y1 plus y2. T maps this input to the dot product of 1, 2, and that input. Therefore, this is x1 plus x2 plus 2 times quantity y1 plus y2, 2y1 plus 2y2. For the right-hand side, the image of x1, y1 under t is the dot product of 1, 2, and x1, y1 plus the image of x2 y2 is again the dot product of 1 2 and x2 y2 this one is equal to x1 plus 2 y1 this dot product is x2 plus 2 y2 if you now compare the left hand side and the right hand side they are equal so therefore, this is true. Next, let us verify the second property. The left-hand side is T of 
cx cy t map cx cy to the dot product of 1 2 and cx cy this is equal to cx plus 2cy if you look at c times t of xy this is equal to c times t of xy is a dot product of 1 2 xy dot product of 1 2 and xy is x plus 2y this and this are exactly the same so therefore this is also true now in general if we fix a vector w in an inner product space v we define this function from v to r as follows we have a subscript w here to indicate that we are using the vector w what this function does is that it maps a vector v in v to the inner product of that vector with our fixed vector w here let us verify our first property we want to check that if i have two arbitrary elements in v this is the same as this one here v1 and v2 are arbitrary elements in v let's look at the left hand side By definition, this is the inner product of W with the inputs V1 plus V2. But recall from our properties of inner product, this can be distributed, correct? This is inner product of W with V1 plus inner product of W with V2. But this inner product of W with V1 is exactly your image of V1 under w and wv2 is the image of v2 under the function t next let us verify the second property the image of cv is that the same as c times the image of v starting with the image of cv by definition this is the inner product of w with cv with the input recall from our properties of inner product that we can pull this out this becomes c w v and therefore this is now your w v is the image of v under the function dw hence this is really a linear transformation Here's another example. We now have a function from Pn, the set of polynomials of degree less than or equal to n. It maps a polynomial P of x to P of x plus 1. Let us verify our first property. Take note here that u and v are arbitrary elements in v, and our v in this case is pn. So it's very important to understand what your arbitrary elements are. Since you are in pn, u and v are polynomial. So I will now replace this by p of x plus q of x. p of x and q of x are arbitrary polynomials in pn i want to check if this is the same as t of p of x plus t of q of x starting with the left hand side t of p of x plus q of x p of x plus q of x is the polynomial p plus q of x correct that is the definition of the sum of two polynomials so now what is the image of 
p plus q of x under the function t, it will just map the polynomial to p plus q of x plus 1. But by definition, p plus q of x plus 1 is the same as p of x plus 1 plus q of x plus 1. And this is precisely your t of p of x plus t of q of x. So that takes care of your first property. For our second property, we want to verify that t c of c times v is that the same as c times t of v. Can we pull out your scalar? I will first replace my v by an arbitrary element in v. So that's p of x. This is what I want to check. Starting with t of c times p of x. The function t maps it to c p times x plus 1. And c times p of x plus 1, I can view it like that. So that's c times t of p of x. So that takes care of your second property. This is really a linear transformation. Here's another example. This time our function is from p n to r. What does this function t do? What it does is that it maps a polynomial in Pn to the leading coefficient, An. Again, let us verify the first property. Our arbitrary elements here are in Pn. So therefore, I will let u be equal to an arbitrary element in Pn, A0 plus A1x up to Anxn, and my V is B0 plus B1x up to Bnx to the n. What is T of U plus V? Note that U plus V is A0 plus B0 and so on up to An plus Bn x raised to n. So therefore, what is T of U plus V? It's the coefficient of x to the n. So that's An plus Bn. But your an is the leading coefficient of u, so that's your t of u. And bn is the leading coefficient of v, so that's your t of v. That takes care of the first property. Second, let us check that t times cu is that the same as c times t of v. What is our cu? cu is... C A0 and so on up to C A N X to the N. So therefore, T of C U, the leading coefficient of C U is C times A N. But A N is your leading coefficient of U. This A N is your T of that takes care of the second property. Hence, this function is indeed a linear transformation. Here is our first non-example of a linear transformation. If we define a function from the set of all n by n matrix to the set of real numbers, so what it does is it maps a square matrix A to its determinant. This is not a linear transformation. What do you think is that property that is not satisfied? That would be the first property because if I get two arbitrary elements in MN, so suppose I have A and B, T of A plus B is not the same as T of A plus T of B. T of A plus B is the determinant of A plus B. This is not the same as T of A, which is determinant of A 
plus T of B is determinant of B. Let us recall that determinant is not distributive, correct? So, that's why this is not a linear transformation. Although we already know that this is not a linear transformation because the first property is not satisfied, let us still proceed with the second property. Is the second property satisfied if we have T times C of A? Is that the same as C times T of A? So, we are asking ourselves whether the determinant of C A is that the same as C times the determinant of A? No. These are not equal as well because determinant of C A, this is equal to C to the N times determinant of A. So both properties are not satisfied. But then again, only one property is required to show that a function is not a linear transformation. Here's another example of a linear transformation. What does this function do? What it does is that it maps an m by n matrix to its transpose. So that's why it is a function from the set of all m by n matrices to the set of all n by m matrix. Let us verify the first property. I will get two arbitrary elements in m by n. Let's say a and b. Is this the same as t of a plus t of b? t of a plus b is the transpose of the input a plus B. From properties of transpose, this is A transpose plus B transpose. And that's your T of A plus T of B. Next, T of C A is that the same as C times T of A. T of C A is equal to the transpose of the input C A. But from our properties of transpose, we can simply pull out the scalar C and multiply it with the transpose of A. So this is your C, T of A. Remember that the first property of linear transformation is that it should be distributive over addition. And then we can pull out a constant if it is just multiplied to an input. Here is another example. What does this function D? I called it D because it maps a function. Take note that our V here is the vector space of infinitely differentiable functions. So in the first place, they are functions. But we will also want it to be infinitely differentiable. What it does is that it maps a function F to its derivative. So that's why we want it to be differentiable. So for the first property, what do we get? two arbitrary elements in V. But for you to be an element in V, you have to be a function. So that's why I will let F1 and F2 be elements in my vector space. V, I will check that this is D F1 plus D of F2. By definition, D of F1 plus F2 is the derivative of F1 and F2, correct? That's the definition. But from our knowledge of calculus, the derivative function can be sort of distributed. That's f1 prime plus f2 prime. That's exactly your df1 plus df2. Moreover, if you get the derivative of a constant times a function, this is the same as constant times the derivative of the function, right? Derivative of C times a constant function by definition is C F prime. But when you're getting the derivative, you pull out the constant and you multiply it with the derivative of F. This is your C times D of F. For our last example, we have the vector space of continuous functions and W is the vector space of real valued functions. We have the function I which maps a function F to the definite integral of that function from 0 to T. Let us verify the first property, although by now you should have an idea that this one would really be true. 
i of f1 plus f2 by definition is the integral from 0 to t of f1 plus f2 of x. This is equal to f1 of x plus f2 of x. But integral is distributive, correct? Over addition. That's f1x plus integral of f2x. This is precisely your i of f1. This is your i of f2. For the second property, we want to check that i of a constant times a function is that the same as the constant times i of f i times cf is the integral from zero to t of the function cf but from our property of integrals we can pull out the constant c This one here is I of F. So we've seen a lot of examples of linear transformations and how to verify that those are really linear transformations. In our next video lecture, I will discuss properties of linear transformations.